Hello boys and girls and welcome back to art. This week we are looking at the story Giraffes Can't Dance and we are creating artwork in that style. So we're going to create a giraffe dancing in the moonlight on the grass. So we're thinking about our foreground and our midground and our background as we are creating this project. So we're going to start off with our crayons and we want to think about how we're going to draw our giraffe dancing in the moonlight. So we want to break our giraffe down into different shapes and we want to think about whether we want our giraffe uh, standing up or kind of doing like a somersault in the air. How do we want our giraffe to be? So what I like to do is I like to start with our giraffe's head and our giraffe's head is an oval and doing it in yellow and I don't think we can see that so let's change it to orange even though giraffes are yellow we can see it better with orange and then our giraffe will have a long neck so we want to make our giraffe kind of big because he's in the foreground and he's in the front so we have a nice big giraffe. So I started close to the top of the paper to make a nice oval and then a nice long neck. And I'm gonna make a big, big oval for our giraffe's body. And then we wanna think about how we want our giraffe to pose. So do we want one leg on this side, one leg on that side, one arm up, one arm down? How do we want our giraffe's arms to be? So I'm gonna draw my giraffe with one leg out to the side. It's a big, long rectangle and another rectangle on the other side. And I'm gonna draw one arm up in the air, nice and long. And the other arm is going to be kind of like a V shape to the side, kind of bent. And then we need to draw our giraffe's tail, which is a skinny rectangle with a little, kind of like a circle, but the circle has a point or an oval has a point at the end. And then we think about, okay, our giraffe has ears. So we have two kind of, kind of that same shape as the tail where it kind of comes up into a point and back down, kind of like a curved line. And so there we have our basic shape for our giraffe. And you can have yours doing a different pose, however you want your giraffe to be. Your paper needs to be vertical up and down for this project. So think about how you want your giraffe to be posed inside the picture. But as you can see, I just kind of broke the shapes down into different sections as I was drawing it and that way I know where each piece is going to go. And then we want to think about all the different details that giraffes have. They have big spots. So kind of like an organic or a freeform shape that kind of goes around. You can place these spots anywhere you want on your giraffe's body, maybe even a little bit on the tail. Maybe draw some lines on the tail as well for the little tail feathers or the tail, the hair on the tail. They don't really have feathers. And then they have some hooves. So we're gonna draw a straight line across to make like a little square at the top, the ends of each one. And then they have these little horns on the top of their head. So like a vertical line, so two vertical lines and then like a little circle on top. And they usually have this mane that's kind of like a zigzag line that goes down the side of their, their big long neck. So now you can see that it's a giraffe, it's starting to come together and create the different shapes on our giraffe. We still need to add our giraffe's face, but we're starting to get the basic idea of our giraffe. So now we're gonna add two circles for the eyes or you can do some curved lines if the giraffe is dancing. He might have his eyes closed. And we wanna draw like a little smile on our giraffe's face. 
and maybe two little circles for some nostrils at the top. So you can really see our giraffe, our Gerald, our giraffe is standing and it's starting to look like a giraffe. And now we want to think about the ground. So we want to draw that Gerald is either on the ground or maybe he's up in the sky, however you want to decorate that. But I'm going to draw a curved line that goes from one side and then it's going to go behind Gerald because it's behind, it's in the back. So Gerald is in the front, in the foreground. So we want our line to go behind and you can kind of see if I trace and just draw an imaginary line behind his hand, it's going to continue to his back and then it's going to go kind of like imaginary across and start right at the other side of his belly and curve down. So that's how we can see that the background or the grass is behind him because it's it wouldn't it's it would go through him otherwise if it was in front of him. And then we're going to think about the grass itself. So it has little in the back, it's going to be really small little pieces of grass. And then maybe in the middle it's going to get a little bit bigger, like medium sized. And then in the front it's going to be really big. So we're thinking about that foreground and that midground and that background. It's really tiny little pieces of grass in the background and then medium sized pieces in the middle and really big pieces in the foreground. So slowly getting smaller or if you start from the back, slowly getting bigger. However you want to decorate, maybe there's some pieces of grass going off the page All right, so now that we have our grass, you can see that foreground, that midground, and that background. Now we want to take our white crayon and we want to create the moon. And it's really hard to see this big circle that I'm creating for the moon, but we want the moon to be nice and big, as big as you could make that nice circle in the sky. And you want to try, and I'm going to kind of move my paper around so I can see it a little bit better but you want to try to color that in. And I know it's a white crayon on white piece of paper. It's really hard to see, but try your best to make that big moon, big circle shape really filled in with your white crayon. That way, when we go to paint all of this in, in a little bit, you'll be able to see that moon really nicely because we're doing a wax resist where the crayon and the water from the paint don't mix. You can kind of see that. I know it's hard to see, but yeah, I know it's, it's really hard to see, but you can kind of see the circle right here. And now we're going to put some stars in the sky. So I'm going to make some circles that go around my Gerald giraffe. And you don't have to use an orange crayon, but as you could see from before, it was really hard to see the yellow. And now I'm using white, and that's really hard to see too. But you'll be able to see the white when I paint over it. But for the giraffe, I wanted you to be able to see the body easily. So I did orange instead of yellow, but you are definitely welcome to use yellow. All right, so I have lots of different circles and I'm moving my paper to try to see if I need to put some more little stars around the moon. And just kind of place them around the night sky all around my paper. All right. And I think that's pretty good. So now I have everything that I want in my picture. I've made sure that I have the foreground and the midground and the background. I made sure I added different patterns, different organic shapes, and I used different shapes to create my giraffe. So now I'm gonna paint everything in. And I'm gonna do this by going step by step, little by little. I'm gonna start with the background and wait for that to dry before drawing in Gerald, 
the giraffe because otherwise the the blue paint might get into the yellow paint and it might mix and make green. And I don't want it to make green because I would just want the grass to be green. So I want to make sure that the blue paint is dry first before starting that yellow. All right, so I'm going to paint everything in and you're welcome to paint with me and we can do this together. Alright boys and girls, here is my dancing giraffe from the book Giraffes Can't Dance. I have a, him kind of posed with his arm up in the air and one arm kind of on his hip or on his side. I used a really bright white crayon and then painted over it making a crayon resist and as you can see I have the bottom of my paper has the foreground with the big pieces of grass and the midground with the medium sized grass and the background. So it's creating that distance with our big giraffe dancing in the moonlight. I hope that you enjoy this project and I can't wait to see what you create and what you come up with and what pose you have Gerald your giraffe dancing in. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.